Hello everyone and welcome to Data Analytics Chat. Uh, if you're a new listener here, we divulge into the latest trends and challenges in the ever-growing data analytics field. Um, if you're a returning listener, welcome back. Um, today we've got an interesting topic where we're discussing the move from a technical role into leadership. And I think it's quite apparent that it's quite a difficult thing to do, uh, a lot of different skills to learn. And I mean, also just whether people want to do it as well, I guess it's a big, a big challenge because you can sometimes get pushed into, if, if you're a top performer, you can easily quite often, they'll think you are good enough to get progressed ahead. So today I have got Frank Stadler on the podcast where we'll divulge into this. So welcome, Frank. Hi, Ben. Happy to be here you, uh, to be here, and thanks for having me. No problem. So I mean, normally I would introduce yourself, but that is going to uh, sort of go uh, evolve into my first question, which is, so can you share your story of how you progressed from a technical position into a leadership role? Sure. Happy to do so. So I first started off my career by when I studied uh, computer sciences and after that I got my first job uh, as a programmer, a software engineer. And for the next several years I, I spent working in different roles in different companies as a software engineer trying to gain seniority. And at some point, uh, I felt that my career basically stagnated. And then when my company growth or the growth of the company I was in stagnated as well, I took the chance and, and was on the lookout for, for a new role, a new position. And I was lucky enough to get a leadership position as a team lead for software engineering which was uh, quite a uh, exciting uh, opportunity for me. And I was also lucky that the company actually entrusted me with the role, even though I had no experience before that, which is always something that's really difficult. Most companies only want leadership roles to be filled by people that already have leadership experience. So switching companies and switching into a leadership role was certainly an interesting ride. And that's where I got my first experience in, as a leader. And then I transitioned back into individual contributor role with my switch from software engineering to data science. That was about five years ago. And about three years ago, I, I changed companies again and regained my leadership position, this time in data science. And I haven't looked back since then. So I'm all set on continuing my journey as a leader. Okay, interesting. What was the, out of interest, what was the sort of, I do see this quite often in the field. Like what was your reason to step back into individual contributor role? Uh, for, for me, it was personal reasons. This was pre-COVID and I did not want to commute into the office every day. So basically, I made a deal with the company that I would give up my leadership role in exchange for being able to work remotely. A couple of years later, this would certainly have has have happened differently with COVID and, and the remote work push we, we saw. But back in 2018, this was not really an option. So I gave up my leadership role to be able to work remotely. Okay, no, interesting. Yeah, and then you sort of touched base on my next question is you felt your role stagnated. I mean, is there anything else that like inspired you in like to transition <laughs> from a technical role into a more leadership run? I mean, do you have any, I guess, mentors or anything, people you look up to, or was there anything in particular that you know, give you that, I guess, that emphasis to make that move? Yeah, so w when I was first considering going into a leadership role, that was basically around 10 years ago. And uh, for me and, and the companies I worked in, uh, the, the only way forward after b working as a, a co individual contributor for quite some time was basically 
becoming team lead. So there was no technical track, there was no expert uh, career choice. So I, I did not want to stay on, on that level for the rest of my career. And basically that meant I, I would have to go the, the leadership role. Uh, I did not see a different opportunity. These days uh, there are certain alternatives that uh, people can take. Yeah, no, of course, <laughs> especially in yeah, the data world, it is evolving and getting uh, <laughs> a lot different. So obviously with that step up is obviously you come from somewhere with really good technical skills, going into the unknown with like leadership skills, like the soft skills that you need is completely different playing field. What were the specific challenges you faced during this transition? And I guess for the listeners, like how to go overcome them? Yeah, <clears throat> you already mentioned uh, a big one. So the skill set required uh, as a leader is, is uh, vastly different than uh, as an yep. con individual contributor, especially the interpersonal skills. So that was a steep learning curve. Uh, I was basically thrown in the water there and I had to be able to to adjust to my team colleagues, uh, my team members and able to to work with them, not just on a, on a equal level, but also as, as a, a direct supervisor and, and basically give them instructions and use my technical skills and my personal skills to to basically lead them in the right direction. And, and that was challenging in one-on-ones and also in group settings. Luckily, I had a very good mentoring from my uh, direct boss. So my CTO uh, supported me a lot and he, he gave me lots of insights. And I also had the support of my head of HR, who also gave me some mentoring sessions and, and basically okay. taught me some some theory and, and, and some basic principles that are very helpful. Okay, good. Now, I definitely think obviously mentoring is really important, I think. Like, I know a lot of companies now, they do like peer schemes and offer that. So was it a lot of it then, a lot of your learning curve, was it more on the job sort of training you took? I, I, I would say... Learned? I would say it was a mix. So uh, a lot of it was certainly on the job, but there was uh, certainly also a lot for me to to basically spend time and effort uh, outside of the job to to get the theoretical knowledge and and also to to dive deeper into some topics that you just cannot cover uh, on the job. Yeah, no, brilliant. Now it's also good. I mean, obviously, when the company that gave you the chance to move into leadership. I guess, did they just, I mean, was it, did they notice something about you or was it more you pushing for it? I, I think it was partially my, my, me pushing for it and, and saying okay. I, I can do this. But I think it was also, they, they had some confidence that I would be able to do it, uh, judging from, from the interviews I, I had with them. And also probably a little bit of risk on their side, but they said, okay, we need someone rather quickly and, and Frank is the best candidate we have here. So we just okay. check and, and try and see if it works out and it did work out well. That's good to hear. And then I guess, so with the move, did you notice a sort of shift in mindset from moving from like a technical role to a like tech leadership position? Yeah, absolutely. You you really need to start to to think differently and and also to behave differently. So for for me, the biggest my shift was I cannot solely focus on on my daily work and like I have mm. some one or two topics that I need to take care of and I can just focus on that. You probably you suddenly have like 20 topics on on your uh, calendar that you need to take care of and you need to also check out which other departments and parts of the company are you interacting with what are their interests and and what is the interest of your team members and your boss so th there's a lot of moves, moving pieces that you have to consider and that you have to take care of 
So you, you cannot go that deeply into each detail anymore. You need to be able to abstract and, and try to focus on the important things and start delegating and, and also letting go. It's probably one of the best known and, and most often uh, mentioned topics that uh, people transitioning from a technical role to, to leadership need to be able to let go and, and not do everything on their own and, and resist the urge to say, I can do it quicker and uh, maybe I can do it even better than the others, uh, but letting go and let the team do it and you do the leadership tasks. Yeah, no, I can agree. I can resonate with my business that like, I see. It's a bit like, so when you move to a leadership role, you've got a million and one things to do. And yeah, letting go is the difficult bit because it's just your. I guess it's it's more change, isn't it? You're used to working in that way, and then then you've got to rely on people. That's <laughs> it's the dedication part. Yeah. And, okay. Uh, what I mean, what do you think are the most important skills to be successful in the leadership role? Then I think the interpersonal skills and and the communication skills and and social skills are probably the the most valuable you can have in in the leadership role of of course you still need some technical skills and 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 formal skills as well but the communication and how you act with with others is probably the the biggest single contributor to making you a successful leader and the second most important thing I would say is quick thinking and and decision making skills so as a leader, you usually have to make a lot more decisions. You have to make them a lot quicker. You cannot take your time contemplating every decision for a week. And so being able to do a lot of decisions quickly is also something I think is very important as a leader. Yeah, cool. And then was there, I mean, obviously I know communication skills is really important. Again, was that more on the job? Um, I mean, you you can do courses and and you can do trainings online, like video courses or reading books. But yeah. in the end, it all boils down to experience and and having situations where communication helped you solve a problem or diffuse a situation. So in the end, it's all experience and, and routine. Yeah. There's only so much you can learn in theory. You have to do it. Yeah, and then do you think, obviously, you've got to be quite risky then? Because a lot, I mean, I a lot of people that fear of failure or fear of going into the unknown, do you think that plays an important part? You just got to just sort of go for it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, absolutely. I, I think it's very natural to be afraid. And mm. I, I think especially when starting out in a leadership role it's very important that you have a strong support network around you that you like have a direct report that is confident in you and that you have like peers that support you and and that understand that you're new in the role and and that you might make mistakes and nobody starts out perfect so there's certainly a learning curve attached to that and I think many also face, and I know I for sure did face some level of imposter syndrome saying, yeah. what, what am I even doing here? Uh, am I able to do this? Who gave me this <laughs> job? <laughs> so yeah. that, that's certainly also part of it. But again, you, you can only power through and, and face it head on and gain the experience the hard way. I, I don't think there's a quick way to get through this. Yeah, uh, imposter syndrome re <laughs> relates to when I was doing like when I did my marathons last few years. <laughs> Halfway through, it's like, why the hell am I doing this? I'm not <laughs> going to do it. But then, like, so you just have to, I guess, push yourself through it, don't you? Like, yeah, no, nah, uh, interesting. I, so, I uh, think the, the the marathon comparison is probably very good for leadership role as well. I mean, it's it's not a sprint. So transitioning into a leadership role certainly is a marathon as well. And it's not a quick win. It's not a one month project, but yeah. it's a lifelong decision. And you'll never stop learning and developing as a leader. Yeah, no, true. So what strategies did you use to build in like, Lead, like yeah, lead successful teams, considering you come from like a technical background. 
So for for me, I always strive to to be uh, very diverse in in the team building and have diversity in in all different aspects of, of the team. So for f starting, have diverse backgrounds and and personalities, mm -hmm. maybe even nationalities, but also diverse experience levels. So always have a mix yes. of experienced people and and juniors, even part time working students, and have different skills. So equal uh, have some people that are experts in in some uh, areas and also difference in work exp work mentality so you you have uh, the innovators you you have the workhorse you basically have the the specialist so try to be as diverse as possible in your team setup and then you will have resilient teams and successful teams yeah no definitely i think it's you're yeah, getting that balancing act that's, I guess, where the challenge is, <laughs> like, yeah. especially for hiring. Obviously, I've got experience there. is crucial for businesses. Getting that balancing act is a big challenge. Yeah, and another part, of course, is enablement for the team and, and feedback and, and understanding that you, you need to support them and you need to develop them or help them in developing themselves. That's also a very crucial part. So getting the team together is only the start and, and then you have to, to form the team and, and support it on their way to become the best team they can be. Yeah, no, no, definitely. So that, I guess, uh, also the data analytics field is like rapidly evolving. I, I even had a conversation today is that, uh, about a person who wanted to stay within the tech leadership type of work because they want to remain current in the current landscape. So for people that have moved into the leadership role, how do you stay, how do you adapt to the changes and keep aligned to the new technologies uh, and methodologies that come in? Yeah, so that, that that's certainly a, a challenge, especially since most leaders usually have very busy uh, schedules already and, and little time to also deal with this. I always try to to spend some time staying up to commu actual industry news. So mm -hmm. like read LinkedIn, read blogs, read newsletters and, and stay current on that at least. But again, you, you can only do so much and it's certainly not possible to dive deeply into the technical details of each new technology and, and stay current on that. So you have to accept the fact that you can only scratch the surface. But I always had the best results and I, I thought it was the best idea to try to have a very broad approach and, and cover a lot of ground and, and different topics, different technologies, because mm -hmm. you never know which topic will be more important in, in the future. For example, staying with the data field, I started out doing a lot of data analytics and then data science. And recently I started looking more into data engineering topics because yeah. I think they will certainly become more relevant in the next one, two, three years. So you, you have to adopt on, on a high level as well as on, on individual technologies. Yeah, no, no even like we've definitely seen a shift recently, like what's all about data science models, but even the last two years, it's definitely now, it's definitely the drive for data engineering and data <laughs> management because businesses yeah. are looking to get more out of their data and get it as fast as possible as well. Uh, cool. And then what I guess, obviously, keeping on to the learning theme, what, as a leader, how do you? approach continuous learning to stay relevant and effective? Yeah, it, it's twofold. So for, for myself, I have decided or come to the conclusion that continuous learning is basically inevitable and, and you mm -hmm. just need to dedicate some part of your time to, to stay relevant with your skills. The, the challenge as a leader is to also transport that idea onto your team. And, and that's where the very different people and, and very different ideologies, some people on the same page and, and they absolutely understand continuous learning is essential and 
they are also willing and able to dedicate enough time on that. But then there's always the, the challenge. People expect to get the time on the job and, and mm -hmm. get basically all the training they need on the job. And yeah, that can be difficult depending on, on the work setup you have and the project load. And it's a, a very big challenge. Yeah, I, I can relate to, obviously I've moved, moved to Spain for the last four years and I've now finally get into grips to learn a new language and it's like even that you know like I've just realized you need to constantly continuously be working on it daily and then obviously that over priorities for work obviously work comes first but obviously now I've got to make time you have to just make priority for it because you just you need that continuous learning just to if you're going to progress so I guess yeah like it's similar to the tech scene because obviously you'll get you'll have key projects you need to deliver to so that work will be important but obviously there could be new technologies, new skills you need to learn that will be help you in three, six months or in the near future. Yeah, I, I always try to to combine the, the work and the projects and, and the training for the team. So it's not always possible, but if you have the chance to maybe for a project use a new technology and have one team member get some experience in the new technology, that way they will learn something new. And also you can test out to see if it might be a good idea to switch the, the core technology stack for, for the team and, and just adopt to, to new things. So it's not always possible, but if it is, it's certainly th something I would recommend doing. Yeah, no, nice insights. Um, so finally then, what advice would you have for the listeners who might be contemplating moving in from a technical role into a leadership position yeah I, I think it's very important to get clarity on what really do you want and what really makes you enjoy work so like 10 years ago for me there, there was not only basically one career track but but these days there's at least two very common career tracks one is going in the leadership management role and the other is the technical expert I'm sure in the future there will be probably even more career tracks. So one should really think long and, and intense uh, about what do you want to do? Do you want to work with people or do you want to work with technology? And yeah. if you decide, I like technology, but I like people as well. And I like to create bigger things and maybe have more responsibility, then you should familiarize yourself with with the fact that you're even going down a, a bigger hole of continuous learning and you you have even more topics to cover but the rewards of course are also very interesting and and i really enjoy my work and i mean there's financial aspects of as well of course but those should not be the relevant ones I would never recommend anybody to go into leadership purely for financial reasons because you will not be happy, you will not be a good leader. So you should always have the motivation to work with people and not be a very strong technical individual contributor. In tech, is like people here. There's two routes, isn't there? It tend to be like it's the leadership route or the de the design route, which is like the like you can progress to high level of all architecture. And then I guess there is the, the balancing in the middle bit before so the tech leadership type of work. And I guess if people are uncertain where their skills lie, I mean, there's lots of things you can do now, like personality tests and things like that to see whether you, you've got the potential to make a step up. And also, I guess you can just give it a try, see whether it's something you like. I would say most companies and, and mo most departments have the chance to, to give some senior people the basically the possibility to test this out. For example, if you have project teams, then, then you can assign project lead to one of your senior team members and, and basically let them try out leading the more junior people and, and see how that works under your guidance uh, or mentoring, of course. And also I have seen plenty of companies that are open to just letting people try and, and see if whether they like it. And if 
they see it's not the right job for me, then they switch tracks or roles maybe half a year later. So I, yep. I think companies also need to support this and, and give people a, a chance to test out the role and, and see whether they it resonates with them. What certainly they should not be doing is just saying, okay, you're the most experienced individual contributor, you will be the team lead now. Yeah. I know. You can see, hear them stories all the time. I mean, even in sales, in my role, like you could be like a top biller or top salesman, and then they think they just expect you to put progress into a leadership role when your skills or even your needs or your wants just don't align. But people just take take the opportunity. Yeah. Um, but brilliant. No, really interesting topic, and yeah, great insights from you. So I really appreciate you being on the podcast. Thank Thanks. You. Uh, had a great time. It was very interesting. Brilliant. All right. Thank you, Frank. Bye.